folks, welcome back to the channel again. Nice to see you. Today's video is going to be about cherry shrimp. Um, if you've been following for a while, you'll know that I've got cherry shrimp all over the fish room and all over the house. It's not like they're invading or anything, but you know what I mean. But I've never had like a dedicated shrimp tank, if you like. They've always just been a kind of afterthought or chucked in, see what happens type thing. But um, I moved the bristle nose plecos out of this tank, which is what this previously was. And I thought, let's try it out and give it a bash. My water around here is really good um, for cherry shrimp. I've never had to actually do anything specific for them. Um, they've always just kind of gone with the flow, taken off and spawned thousands of them. So this tank has been bare for about a week or so. Um, about a week or so I'll put it in this piece of rock here. Now this is a piece of rock that was in my saltwater tank for a while. Um, and I'd, I've read various conflicting pieces of information about whether or not you can use rock from a marine tank and a freshwater tank. Um, so I've had it in here for about a week. I've been testing the water fairly regularly, looking for things like pH swings, and it, it just hasn't happened. Um, I was hoping that it might raise the hardness a little bit because I've got quite soft water and I thought I could use or it might improve my yield if I had a bit harder water in this tank. Mm, it, it hasn't really um, so far, but it's only been in there a week and it's only one piece of rock, so maybe that's what the problem is. Um, I think because it was originally an artificial piece of rock, so it's not an old piece of coral or anything like that that's died out when it was live rock in my marine tank, that's probably why it's not making too much of a difference. But nevertheless, it does have lots of little nooks and crannies and nice little crevices for the shrimp to get in and hide around and hunt for food and do the things that they like to do. So I'll probably stick in another piece at some point. Well, I might just leave it like this just now. I might put in another piece of wood. So at the moment, all we've got in there is a couple of sponge filters. We've got one at either side. I've got a piece of bog wood. I've got a little bit of java moss and this piece of rock. Um, the majority of the shrimp at the moment are in this tank, which is a kind of guppy free-for-all at the moment. Guppy slash shrimp free-for-all. I'll probably take in the piece of wood that's in this tank, put that in here too. A bit more of the java moss because java moss is really good for the shrimp to let the babies hide out in basically and give them the best chance that they've got to grow up. And we'll move a few of the shrimp across and we'll see how we do. So let's have, let's give that a go. So first things first is I will just move all these plants out of the way. So I'll give you a look at these as they are. Now my hands all wet and I can't touch the camera. So that's the shrimp tank slash guppy tank as it is at the moment. So this is really all I ever do is every now and again I'll chuck in one of these Indian almond leaves and you can see on there if it ever decides to focus. They love that stuff. So I'm going to take that piece of wood and some more of the java moss, stick it in there, put some shrimp in and see how they do. It's not going to be any more finesse than just grabbing it basically. I'll probably get some of the shrimp with me at the same time here. Move it over into this tank. hide the sponge filter a little bit. Let's take a bit of the java moss. Try and take as few pieces of duckweed as possible with me. What I like to do with it is just kind of hook it in so as it kind of anchors it to the, the wood. There we go, you've got your bog standard basic shrimp set up. So all I need to do now is catch a few of the shrimp put them over. I'm not going to move all the shrimp I can get. I'm just going to put in a bunch at the moment and then monitor them for another couple of weeks and see how we got on there. So it should be just a case of dipping the net in and getting a few shrimp. Like so. And it's no guppies, thank you. And one of the reasons that I want to do this is to start being a bit more selective with my shrimp breeding. Because uh, like I was saying before, I've mainly just 
let them get on with it and do their own thing. Um, I have tried to keep the colony um, viable and start um, splitting it out. I've done trades with various people just so as I'm introducing new genetics in there and they're not all completely inbred and horrible. And to be fair, to my untrained eye, most of them look fine. Um, come on, why are you not coming out? There we go. So I've put in about a dozen now. That'll do for now. I'm just going to keep an eye on these over the next few weeks and make sure that they don't all die mysteriously. Because that would be bad. So for feeding them, and, uh, I've never really done anything special for them. I've never given them a shrimp specific food. Um, every now and again I'll throw in the Indian almond leaf. That's about the only thing I do just for the shrimp themselves. But again, the snails like that too. Um, so they get flake, they get pellets, they get whatever it is, algae wafers, that the rest of the fish that are in the tank with them. Um, I think I'll probably continue doing that, because if it works so far, why change a winning formula? I'll just give these a couple of weeks like this, make sure that everything's healthy, make sure that we get um, some saddled and some buried shrimp, that everything's going through the motions as it would be. Um, and I think that's as good as I can hope for at the moment. Um, I have been selling these on my website. Um, I've sold a few batches. I've got good reports that they seem to make it through the post okay, even when a, one of them was quite a cold snap that came on us unexpectedly. And that seemed to do all right. One got delayed as well, and that seemed to do okay. And I've sold a few on eBay and at various meets and things like that. So they're, they're quite a good earner, if you like. <laughs> they don't actually earn me much. They just get me some more fish food and things like that. Usually it's swaps that I do. Um, so yes, that should hopefully keep everything ticking over. I've got some floating um, plants in here as well. Again, that's pretty good for shrimp cover. So I've got these Amazon frog bits, which are pretty good as well for the old shrimp tank. So I'll keep them populated. And the other thing that they like to do for food, oh, you'll have seen me many videos before people ask me why have you got a fork in your tank and it's because I like to put this in which is courgette I don't cook it or anything like that um, just plop it straight in if you plop it straight in like that it just floats which isn't always the best but I found if you take it down and give it a good squeeze it breaks it up a little bit you can see the air bubbles coming out and I think that distressing it Helps it stay down, he says, as it now floats back up to the top. Okay, this might be a bit fresh. So, first comes to the worst. Jam it under something or stick a fork in. So, obviously, these are the Neo Cardinia shrimp, the cherry shrimp. These are the only shrimp I've ever kept, to be honest. So, I don't know all that much about any different kinds of shrimp. Um, if you are interested in this, definitely go and check out another channel, Simply Shrimps. I'll link it up here somewhere or in the description. Um, you can learn lots more than I could ever possibly begin to tell you about. But I just thought I'd share this because it's a really good way to make some money uh, back. It's not You're not going to get rich off doing this, but you will be able to pay for maybe a month's fish food or the next impulse buy that you want to get or something along those lines. So this is just me trying to dedicate a little bit of space just to the cherry shrimp. Um, how long that lasts I don't know because in all my other tanks like I say I've kept them with other things and the things that I've kept them with successfully is guppies and bristle nose plecos. You often see arguments but in my experience so far at least as long as you give plenty of cover and when you're talking cover you're just talking about bogwood, caves, plants, uh, moss in this case. As long as there's plenty of cover the shrimp usually do quite well. Um, even in my pea puffer tank upstairs, I've got shrimp in there. Now, true, that is as a food source, and but I still see babies every day in that, that tank, and there's not all that much cover in that tank, so they do last. Um, so they're a great little thing to keep. They're, they're really interesting as well to watch, especially when they get bigger, um, and they start to get into the breeding, and you start to try and tell the males from the females. Again, not an expert, but in my experience, uh, the, it's the females that tend to be the better colours, um, certainly with the shrimp that I've had so far. 
uh, and it's them that you can tell when they're getting older and more mature because they get saddled and that's when you can see the, the darkness across the top which looks a bit like a saddle and then when they get buried is when they're carrying the eggs around so you can see them carrying the eggs around again check out Simply Shrimps enjoy the theme tune and he writes the theme tune he sings the theme tune um, <laughs> And you can find out much more about them in there. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share this. It's a great way to make a little bit back. And even if you're not making money, you can swap between other hobbyists and things like that. So that was just a short video today. I hope it's been of some use to you. Um, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. And there'll probably be a follow-up in a few weeks' time. We can check out how they're all doing. But until then, thanks for watching. And as always, click that subscribe button. Click that link. That, not that link. Click that notification bell. That's what I'm trying to say. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.